In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to insert a map frame onto a layout. So you can see I've got ArcGIS Pro open. Um, I've already loaded a project for current wildfires. And uh, I've got a, a map here called Current Wildfires. And in that map, I've loaded a couple of layers. I've got a USA Current Wildfires layer. This is actually a group layer. All right, if you expand it, you'll see that we have a layer for current incidents. Uh, that's the point layer that you see here, which uh, depicts each uh, wildfire incident. And I've also got a current perimeters uh, layer in here as well. That's part of the group layer. And you can see that kind of if I zoom in here, this is, uh, this is, this is the perimeter layer. So that's, that's what my group layer is at this point, is uh, I've got a point layer and I've got a polygon layer that represents the current incidents and the current perimeters. Now I also have a layer in here for uh, the current drought conditions as well. So that's what I have in my map. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new layout. And to do that, I can go to the Insert tab. Uh, there's a couple ways I can do this. Actually, I'll do it from the, the Catalog pane. In the Catalog pane, I can right-click on Layouts, and I'll just select New Layout. And uh, that'll create uh, just an, an empty layout at this point. So it's got a default name of Layout. Uh, it has a default uh, page size, page orientation. And we'll just leave those as is for this particular example because it doesn't really matter. Um, now, at this point, one of the first things you would typically do would be to add a map frame. And uh, this is done through the Insert tab. On the Insert tab, there's a Map Frame button. Now, if you click this, it's a drop down. Essentially, it's going to be a gallery of any maps or scenes that you've added to your current project. So you can see I have uh, maps under current wild, the current wildfires map. Uh, there's a world street map, world topographic map, and other, which is essentially none. And uh, those correspond to the maps that you see in your catalog pane. So in the catalog pane, I have current wildfires. I have world street map, world topographic map. All right, so every map or scene that you've added to your current project is going to be displayed here. Uh, now, in addition to that, you can see that under current wildfires, I have a lot of different options here. Right? And most of these options are going to be spatial bookmarks. So starting with Los Angeles, going down through Oregon, right? All of these are spatial bookmarks. And you can see that if you go back to the map, go to bookmarks, you can see I have a list of bookmarks here. So all of your bookmarks will show up as options under map frame. Um, the current map extent, or current map scale will show up here as well. Uh, so it says, uh, if you kind of mouse over this, it just says, uh, it gives you the, the current map scale. It says create a map frame for the open map view at this scale. So that will be an option as well. And then your other option is going to be the default extent. And uh, so the default extent, just to show you what that is, the default extent is defined on the map properties itself. So if I go back to my current wildfires map and I right click on the map uh, frame and I select properties and go to extent, you'll see that the default here is to use the extent of all uh, of data in all layers. Uh, and that includes my USA current wildfires uh, group layer, drought current, and it also includes my base map layers as well. A lot of cases, this is not what you want, right? The default is typically not what you want. And just to kind of show you how this works, if you go to map frame, select default extent, you always have to draw your map uh, frame where you want it as well. So I'll draw a rectangle here, and you'll notice that it populates uh, with the entire world view, which is really not what I want in this, this circumstance. But the reason that is the case is that under my map properties, I've selected use extent of data in all layers. Now, if I click, if I click on use a custom extent, now I have more options, right? I can select the current visible extent, the extent of all data in all layers, which is the default. And then I can also select the extent from a particular layer. So for example, if I select USA active wildfires for the current perimeters, and you can see as I click these different options that it changes the extent. So if I click back to USA Active Wildfires Current Perimeter, hit OK. Now that's going to change this, right? And so if I delete this and then re-add the default extent, now what I'll get is a little bit more refined view, right? Just uh, because this data covers just the United States, this might be a little bit more uh, appropriate for what I'm trying to do, right? The, but you know, the, the point here is that you have lots of different options, right? And these are all tied to the default extent Again, under properties, map extent, using a current, ex uh, using a custom extent is probably what you're going to want to use if you're going to use that default extent. Uh, you can also copy and paste specific uh, coordinates here as well. You've got some copy and paste buttons down here at the bottom, which can be used. 
So you got a lot of different options here, but extent of data in all layers is probably not going to be what you want if you're using a base map that covers the entire world. Um, you know, may, maybe it's what you want, but in, in most cases, you're probably going to want to define a custom extent. And again, those all apply to situations where you're adding the default extent. Now, if you add something else, right, if you add, for example, Los Angeles, what that will do is it'll take the spatial bookmark content and place that in. Right? So that gives you a much more refined view uh, of your layout. All right, so um, you know again, you and you have different options. The other option I wanted to show you here is is the option to include none. So if you go to Map Frame down here at the bottom, under Other, you have the ability to apply none. And what this is going to do is it's going to add a map frame to your layout, but it won't populate that map frame. And you may wonder, you know, what's the purpose of that? Why why would I do something like that? So that that typically would be used for situations where you're wanting to create a template. Right. A lot of organizations want to have the same layout style amongst GIS professionals, right? So they want all their GIS people to use the same template uh, for, for the layer style. And so what you might want to do is if you're constructing a custom layout template for other people in your organization to use, you might use a blank empty map frame. And then when other people use that template that you've built, that layout template that you've built, they can simply populate that map frame based on the information that they want to use. And the way you populate that then would be just to double click and that'll bring up the element pane for the map frame. And you'll notice under map frame where it's set to none, you can then populate that, right? So I might select current wildfires and then it populates that map frame. So when you're selecting none and you're adding it to a layout, typically what you're doing is you're, you're probably in the process of creating a layout template uh, for sharing purposes um, and then whoever is going to use that layout template, uh, they can then populate that map frame with the data that they want to use and still be able to maintain the same uh, layout styling uh, that uh, you're wanting to implement across your organization. All right, so that's it for this time. Thank you for joining me.